All right, so let's shift to our second optimization here. I'm really excited about this one because I received a lot of questions kind of that will be clarified with this optimization. All right, so selecting the right battery technology for use cases, right? Oh, and, and let's not forget about our famous quote here. So lead acid batteries are perfect for UPSs, but a terrible choice for ISO ancillary services. Nikola Tesla himself has said that. Just, just kidding, it was still somebody we don't know, but so, somebody did say that. All right, let's get into the meat and potatoes here. So in, in this optimization, we're assuming now a kind of a two cycle application. So we wanted to, you know, the last optimization, we had one cycle a day, right? We did two cases, deep discharges, shallow discharges. Now we're doing like a, a different type of use cases, two cycles a day, and you're doing deep discharges, and then you have one or 0.1 cycle doing kind of very rapid charging and discharging, which is indicative of frequency regulation. So with a use case like that, what, is, what becomes your, your optimal battery choice? So what we've done here is you know, simulated the, the case through the software. And here you're going to find that we added here the Sankey diagram or, or the loss diagram. And the reason that's important for both the lithium case and the nickel hydrogen technology case is there is a significant difference in amount of losses between these two technologies. That's why we really need to look into where the energy is going. So it's just for everyone's background here, this is the charging portion. So charging from the grid and then going through the inverter, then through the battery terminals, and then kind of through basically a ideal battery and then discharge back into the grid. And as you go through these different steps, there are losses here. So a couple of points to mention here, we assumed again, to keep the comparison focused on the technology selection, we took out auxiliary load and we're focusing, and also for the inverter again, to, because we're using in both cases, the same exact inverter. We just assumed it's going to be an ideal inverter. So almost no losses. Uh, so that really keeps the focus on the battery technology itself. So as you can see here with lithium, you're getting much higher than that 92% uh, we're used to with lithium without the HVAC load. And that's mainly because it's a high cycling application. You're not kind of spending any time just sitting there. But kind of in addition, we can see that with the design we set here, we're, we're meeting 100% of the usage profile we input it, right, which is this one. So we know our system is adequate for the use case. And now let's start looking at the degradation here. So here, what we found is, all right, through for a 20 year project life, we reach 65% at year 20. And to get to that 65% and to have a viable project for 20 years, we needed to have 860, 61 megawatt hours. So I think we're, we're good from that standpoint. We're, we're meeting really all the requirements of the use case. And, and just to clarify, are really, since we're accounting, we wanted to account for the depth of discharge here of, of lithium. So we're really shooting for 444 megawatt hours as a minimum or 65% state of health. So whichever comes first really causes you to add more battery racks to your project. So in this case, really the 65% 
came first. So that, that's why we have this much batteries. All right, now that's for lithium. Let's switch, let's switch over to nickel hydrogen, right? And in this case, the OEM is Enter Venue. Folks may be aware of, of, of them. They're, you know, getting a lot of press and they're really doing a great job with their product. But all right, let's see how it performs. Now, again, we're focusing here on the efficiency of the system and losses. And what you see here is that within the battery, you're getting more, more defined and more significant losses, both when charging the battery and when discharging. So orders of magnitude, well, not orders of magnitude, but significantly more than lithium. Now, what you see here as well is the energy capacity in this adequacy radar went down a bit. And that's because, you know, the system that we defined here <clears throat> is much less efficient than lithium. Again, we were assuming a... 92% round trip efficiency when we develop the POI profile. But since this is kind of less efficient than that, you start to get data points where you don't fully meet the POI profile. But anything above really 90%, we're, we're really good with. So we consider that we kind of met the profile here. All right, so now the degradation. Right. So in order to get to and, and maintain 400 megawatt hours, we only needed 450 megawatt hours worth of nickel hydrogen batteries. Right. So I think the last case we were at, uh, I think it was 500 or no, it was actually 800 and something for lithium. So you can see quite the difference there. The other difference you'll notice is that throughout the years here you only degraded down to 93 percent for lithium this was 65 percent right so in addition to kind of the maintaining the required energy capacity at the poi for 20 years you're also degrading much much less throughout the year so you spend more years having more energy capacity that you can utilize. All right, the summer here. Adam, I'll pass it over to you. Yeah, a lot of info on here, but but Sharif and, and Melman, great job kind of pulling together the, the details there. Really interesting to kind of compare lithium to intervenue in this case. The first thing I want to point out though is, as you guys have shown, is, is that this optimization two between Intervenio and LFP really did consider it running at 2.1 cycles. So I did show here the one cycle deep discharge. So what you're seeing in the far right in the yellow is, so the comparison being kind of for LFP, you would need to add another 140 megawatt hours to account for the now 2.1 cycles that, that you need to run per day as opposed to one cycle. So just want to kind of clarify that if there's confusion on this slide. So, so now kind of looking at the financial results, one thing, and, and we didn't have the financial assumptions here, but er earlier we showed we were assuming $200 per megawatt hour for the battery portion of the CapEx previously. And we're still doing that for LFP here, but we are assuming $350 per kilowatt hour for the Enter Venue product. You know, I'll, I'll stand behind these numbers again. They're for illustrative purposes, that, but the idea is that this non-lithium technology is, is more expensive. I, we also are assuming the same operating cost from a kilowatt hour perspective. Again, that's something that would need to be kind of verified. But what we wanted to really show here is that the difference in degradation and round trip efficiency can really impact the returns here. And that's that's what's really shown here. And so and, and I say degradation because it impacts the initial upfront overbuild. And so you need significantly less initial upfront overbuild with the intervenue product 
than you do with LFP. That was clear from, from Sharif's kind of comments, you know, just now. And, and the impact of that on investment returns is, you know, this is clearly kind of the front runner in any of these three cases with the 5.8% IRR compared to two and a half and 5.1, right? And really it should be compared to the 5.1 because in this case, the utility doesn't really need more than one cycle, but that's probably not gonna have much of an impact on enter venue because it degrades so little even at even doing two cycles per day, right? So, so that's the point, but, but there's something we're not accounting for here in, in these slides and that's the round trip efficiency. And so in the case where you have a toll agreement with an offtake utility, you aren't really paying for that on an ongoing basis, more than likely. It's something you negotiated up front and why you were able to offer that $15 per kilowatt month offtake agreement rate or PP, if you want to call it a PPA rate, you can in the first place. And so you probably would have needed to come under that given the less round trip efficiency that the NRV product has. And so what, what we did here is we calculated sort of a round trip efficiency penalty and that was calculated assuming five cents per kilowatt or yeah, five cents per kilowatt hour uh, multiplied by that efficiency difference. And then, you know, per day, per year, et cetera. And so uh, again, assuming sort of a five cent kind of retail rate that this project would kind of pay as a penalty. And so now the, that dynamic changes and, and now because of the, I would say better round trip efficiency of the lithium product you can see the, the investment returns would point you to really the initial deep discharge example shown. So, you know, again, the, the point of this is the, these details matter. Round trip efficiency in this case, just comparing two different technologies and, and they need to be considered when, when you're pulling together economics and making these decisions up front. Yep. Absolutely. So, Adam, thanks for clarifying kind of that balance between all right, round trip efficiency and what you're losing in terms of you know cost of energy over you know the the entire project lifetime for both cases and really putting a dollar sign on that versus you know how much less maybe you have to pay for the battery capacity because it degrades much less. It, I think that dynamic kind of um, heavily depends on the use case itself. And it, it's great to kind of be able to see when you reach an inflection point between the two and really what ends up being the best case for you. All right, so that basically concludes the optimization too. So I think we can take a couple of questions here. So there's a question in the chat here, is charge and discharge cumulative percentage the battery state of charge? And that was from Lynn Apolis Lauren. And I think actually this, is, this may be referring to really way, way, way back. And I'm sorry if we missed this earlier. Yeah, I think this is referring to this cumulative percentage. So I'll just add some clarity here. So there's two of these cumulative distribution functions. This first one is for power set points. So it, it, what it's basically doing is it's looking at all discharge power set points and basically putting them into buckets. So in blue here is the histogram and in orange, this is the cumulative distribution function. So what this is saying is basically, you know, if you're at 700 or, or I'm sorry, seven megawatts, you have you basically have a little more than 80% of the, of the battery set points, power set points rather. And you only get to hundred percent if you're at around eight megawatts, right? So th there's no really state of charge here whatsoever. I think, you know, on the energy side, right? And, and I'll just clarify, this is coming out of the battery profile creator. So this is basically just looking at for each day in that profile, right? What was the discharge 
throughput, what was the maximum charge throughput? And if you put those into a distribution, right, the discharge energy per day, the charge energy per day, how that ends up looking. So here in this case, our sample, I think the moment this was probably what, 365 days or so, or maybe it was 30 days. But the more number of days you have, the healthier the sample, obviously, and kind of the more defined this distribution is. So to answer your question, state of charge, there is no state of charge here. This is just looking at the usage profile that you have. So you, you'll get a better view at state of charge once you kind of model the system in, in the system modeler here. All right. I, I hope that helped. And I think we can take one more before moving on here. If we extend the lifetime beyond 20 years, would the model provide a degradation in state of health curve? Yes. So I think here you can set this to 30 years, but as you view the results, so for instance here, right, we're getting into 54% state of health, right? And we know that our end of life for our batteries is 65% state of health. We, we just defined that for this workshop across the board. But like I said, it differs from one battery OEM to the other. So this was kind of the first run here. So you'll notice that we went back and added more battery capacity not changing the battery profile. So when you actually add more battery capacity, that means you're using less of the state of charge range, which means you get less degradation, right? Which means you're able to extend what kind of the, the state of health to further years in, in the future. So long story short, to answer your question, yes, it'll go beyond if, if you simulate more years. But as a user, you want to be able to recognize when the battery state of health is going beyond the performance guarantee of the OEM. Now, one thing you'll learn, and this is really getting into the weeds there, with most LFP OEMs, they will tell you, yep, you, you can use our batteries beyond you know, 65% state of health but we, we just won't guarantee it. So you're really taking a risk there and you're opening yourselves up to like operational challenges, balancing challenges between racks and inverters. So you should, if you plan to do that, you probably want to account for more downtime, more O&M cost, because it's going to be difficult to manage a system outside of its performance guarantee. All right, I hope that helps. Okay, I think we can probably move forward to optimization three here. Sorry, folks, we got a lot of slides. Yeah, hey, hey, Sharif, what happens when a battery commits a crime? I don't know what. <laughs> they get charged. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, That's all man. I got. Wow. <laughs> oh, boy. That, that's going to live in YouTube forever. 